Greetings and welcome to a, another video presentation in the Renew Bible series. My name is Dr. Stephen Adelini, and uh, my entry is called How to Determine Your Purpose in the Kingdom of God. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to grow in grace in you. Lord, as we examine these concepts of being renewed, we do so with uh, awe and wonder at your grace and your power and your ability to transform us. And so, Lord, as we look at this installment, we pray for understanding and Holy Spirit to guide us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <clears throat> How to determine your purpose in the kingdom of God. I have three steps or three principles uh, to share with you about this concept of discovering your purpose in the kingdom of God. I'll just preface it by saying uh, every human being is groping for purpose and significance in the universe, and uh, it's important that we realize that not just Christians, but every human was designed to both serve and glorify God. That was what it meant to be an image bearer and to bring rule to the earth. And if we don't apply ourselves to that one single purpose for which we were cre created, We'll, we'll choose alternatives that are usually self-centered and uh, produce nothing in the earth. Whereas we've been created to be beings who mirror image God in the earth and glorify him by doing so. And when we discover that purpose and we live in that purpose, that's how we know real joy. <clears throat> Here are the three steps. The first step is to die to self as a result of the gospel. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. <clears throat> the Westminster Shorter Catechism, question number one, says this, What is the chief end of man? The answer, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Again, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. In order to do that, we cannot live a life to self. We have to identify with the fact that we've, been, we've died and been crucified with Christ to the world and to our purpose and to our dreams, as the Americans call it, living for your dream, and to live for another's dream. We live for the dream that Jesus has, to fill the whole earth with the Father's glory. That is our purpose. And in order to accomplish that, we must stay close to the cross and consider ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God. In Romans 6, every day yield our members for service to Christ and not for service to self. The second principle of how to determine your purpose in the kingdom of God is found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. <clears throat> Jesus says this, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all its righteousness. That simply means all of its righteous ways. And all these things will be added to you. So the, sec the first principle is to die to self. The second principle is to live for God. The word first there, where Jesus tells us to seek first, is not in an order of things. So we say in an American lifestyle, uh, oh, the kingdom of God is my priority. No, no, the kingdom of God is our life. It's our whole life, um, and we seek that first. That Greek word proton there in the Greek for the word first means chiefly. Before anything else, uh, we live for God's glory and proclamation extension of his kingdom. Every day when you do your devotionals, you should go to Romans 6 and you say, I've been, I've been crucified with Christ, I've been buried with Christ, I've been raised into newness of life that I might be a servant of the Lord. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13, yield my members to righteousness this day to glorify the Lord, not only first, but only. Jesus and his glory is our first love, Revelation 2, 4. Remember that church was chided there uh, by the king of the universe and, and the, and the um, bishop of the church, Jesus. When he says, I have this against you, you left your first love. I think he's making reference to this Matthew 6.33, that we no longer seek for his glory and for the extension of his kingdom. We seek for our own personal glory and aggrandizement. 
And we've always got to keep that in mind, those first two principles. Number one, in order to determine your purpose in the kingdom of God, you must die to self. And number two, as you die to self, you then determine by the power of the Holy Spirit to live for God. Point number three is use your gifts and talents for the Lord and for his glory. Uh, Americans are obsessed with finding out personality tests. You can see little quizzes you can take on Facebook all the time to find out what am I? Am I left brain? Am I right brain? Am I? Do I see the donkey or the monkey? All all kinds of little tests. We're so we're so obsessed with ourselves to find out what am I and what has God given me? What are my talents? And what are the gifts? And uh, we spend all of our energy trying to find these things out rather than actually employing them. And the reason that we've been given particular gifts and talents from the Lord is for his glory, is that we as his subjects might have a contribution to make with the whole body of Christ in order to further God's kingdom and fill the earth with his glory and uh, expressly glorify the Lord with our gifts and our talents. Uh, I'm going to say this because we love to take little tests and personality tests and Meyer Briggs tests and all kinds of things to find out what am I and use initials and all kinds of stuff. But you can only know what your gifts and talents are from the Lord by using them. By using them. And here's, here's the way that you can discover how God has gifted you particularly uh, for your contribution to the kingdom of God. Here's what you know to do from the Bible. Rather than take all the tests and try to figure out what I am, am I a prophet, am I a teacher, or anything, just get started. It's impossible for God to steer a car that's sitting still. Have you ever tried to do that? Uh, you can't, without power steering on, you can't, and the engine not running, it's impossible to get a car to go forward and to stay on track. In the same way with Christians, if you just sit there and muse all day, you'll never find out what gifts and talents you have. So to get started, there's some things we know from the Bible that we can do right away. Number one, all Christians are called to be worshipers. Not just singing, but worship God with your whole life. Number two, all of God's people are called to serve. I wrote down here, find a need and meet it. Don't wait for a church program to recruit you uh, in order to serve. Uh, but wherever you see a need, you jump out to get that need filled. It could be in your neighborhood. It could be in your family. It could be in your church family. It can be in the practical. Wherever there's a need, be quick to be a servant of the Lord and serve and meet that need. And you will be uh, fulfilling. You will be using your gifts because you've been called to serve. Number three, we've been called to witness. Every Christian has been called to testify, to proclaim, to be a preacher, as it were, not without, not behind a pulpit addressing people so much, but proclaiming the good news of J Jesus Christ, proclaiming he who has taken us out of darkness into light. Hand out tracts and tell everyone about Jesus, and you will be, uh, you will be functioning in gifts that are already given to you. The next thing we can do in, in uh, employing our gifts is disciple disciple people, not just uh, be friends with people, not just play ping pong or go over the house and watch the game, but finding new Christians and teaching them to learn to worship, to read their Bible, to pray, to serve, to witness, and disciple. Um, we can all do that. Every Christian has been gener generally gifted to worship, serve, witness, and disciple. This is an anointing that we have because we're in Christ. And all these things were found in Christ, and so they're found in us. Without taking tests or finding out what color is your balloon or your parachute or any of those other kind of things. The way that God moves is this. Once you are faithful in the general things you can begin to do in the kingdom, God may use you in more specific ways and show you your gifts. I wrote this, I made this little chart here. I'll just put it up while I explain it. You can see in the funnel, God moves us from being, from general 
gift function to specific gift function. And the principle is this, if you do not function in the general things that I've already listed, it's very highly unlikely that God will use you in specific gift areas. That's where we want to jump to immediately. But first things first, to him who has, much more is given, Matthew 13, 12. And so apply yourself diligently to the things God has already told us to do. And let's go over them one more time in determining your purpose in the kingdom of God. Number one, die to self. Number two, live for God. Number three, use your gifts and talents for the Lord in his service. In this way, you will find joy unspeakable and full of glory, and you'll be able to answer the question with your own life, what is the chief end of man? That is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. God bless you.